Hey everybody. Uh, I know a lot of you guys are struggling with some of the SEMA financial strategy questions. Um, I also struggled with them for a long time. Um, but then I figured out short ways to actually help myself get through the exam. I'm just going to focus on a couple of these questions um, that I've been uh, that I passed. Um, I passed the exam a few months ago. I just want to help you guys to understand why it is possible to do these questions and pass the exam first time. The first thing we're looking at here is question 75. Um, okay, I'm going to be making marks on the screen as I'm going along. What you'll see here is um, question 75 over there. What you'll see is um, the question is asking for a weighted average cost of capital. That's very important. Weighted average cost of capital. So when you get a question like this, the first thing, you obviously have a lot of detail that's coming down here. Okay, Don't go through all the detail and then you get to the question and then you go back to the detail and then you go back to the question. You know what I mean? Try to do the following. Okay, The first thing that you must do is just look straight down at what the question is asking and normally what the question will do is it will say calculate the WAC or calculate the cost of capital or something like that so we'll get to cost of capital um, um, calculations but we'll first just want to focus on WAC okay now what's important about WAC is is that there's a particular formula uh, which forms part of the M&M &M, uh, calculations um, or M&M &M theory, here it is, okay, that's the formula that you obviously have to use to um, calculate um, the whack in this, in this question, but now the problem is, some of these questions, when they ask you for what the new whack is, they're not going to say, for example, the debt is 30 million, and the equity is 100 million, and they want to calculate what the new WAC is if they change the debt from, say, 30 million to 40 million. Uh, what they sometimes do is they just quote and they'll say something like the, the, the debt equity ratio is 40% or something like that. So they'll say the debt equity ratio. equals 40 percent okay now the what you need to understand here is because this can this is where a lot of guys get confused they 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 kind of start thinking hold on a second am i supposed to now use this 40 percent and put the 40 percent over here and there's debt over there and try to adjust it and multiply there by tax and uh, you know and eventually they just get so confused and they lose their way this is what, I'm going to show you a quick short method on how to do this. Okay, so let's go back to the, the original question. What they're doing is, they're asking us to calculate what the WAC is. There it is, WAC. So we know, obviously, if you increase the amount of debt that you have in your company, WAC goes down. Okay, so there's, a, there's, an, incre there's an inverse relationship between debt and um, your weighted average cost of capital okay that's obviously to do with the tax shield caused by interest so as you um, decrease um, WAC so as you decrease your weighted average cost cost of capital uh, it goes down as your as you increase the amount of debt that you have caused by that tax shield so now that we know okay we need to calculate WAC and we need to know what, what's the quickest way to calculate this because of obviously time pressure. So the first thing that you need to do is you need to look and see, okay, what is your cost of capital? So in the question you can see cost of capital is 15%, right? And the question's obviously, like I mentioned, it's asking for the WAC. So we know, if they're asking for WAC and they're giving you the cost of capital, we know immediately that this amount here will be higher than this amount here. Alright? It will, it, will, 
it will reduce the weighted average cost of capital, provided what they're doing is they're asking you to increase the amount of debt in your company. So the question is, are they asking you to increase the amount of debt in your company? Well, the cost of equity, the cost of capital is 15%, and it's an all equity financed company. All equity financed company. So would the cost of capital reduce? Yes, it would. Why? Because there is no debt shield in, in, uh, in an all equity financed company. All right, so now let's just quickly jump to the calculation. All right, so what do we know? We know that WAC is a lower amount than obviously this 15% that's over there. So we need to multiply this 15 by something that is going to reduce it. All right. The, now how it gets done is you obviously in brackets you use that formula, the M&M &M formula, which I'm not going to pull up now but I, because I don't want to show you guys formulas because that actually ends up then just confusing a lot of you, um, you know, with algebraic terms and so forth. I'd rather just show you a simple, simple way to do this. So what you do is you identify where's the tax shield. So there's the tax shield over there, 20%. And then it also says the uh, debt to equity ratio of 1 is to 4. Now what, why that's a little tricky is this. Debt to equity ratio of 1 is to 4 means this. It means debt to equity equals 1 as to um, 4. Okay. But what's important and what you need to understand is that the, the actual formula, this part, this over here, that, is that 20% is actually calculated as debt as to equity plus debt. So without confusing the guys too much, 1 as to 4 plus 1. You got that? So that is where, now what is, what is 1 divided by 5? 1 divided by 5 is 20%. Right. So that, that's your... That's your debt, um, your debt equity ratio over there, okay? And this is your tax rate. Um, that you obviously there's a tax shield on your um, on your debt. The answer to this um, calculation then comes to fourteen comma four percent. That's the result of this calculation over there, 14.4%. Now, remember what I said earlier, I said that the amount of your cost of capital that would be reduced because of the tax yield as you add debt. So they added, they increased or they in, um, took on extra debt and because of the extra debt that they took on, it then reduced the cost of capital, which um, which becomes the, the weighted average cost of capital. And that is then reflected in that 14.4%.